It's the Showgram e-learning on trial next. This is Toronto's breaking news. Traffic and weather news talk 1010 CFRB AM, an iHeart radio station. Can't believe how many new ideas I came up with. I got three laws that I want passed right now. I don't know if even John Tory is allowed to do that. Can you get him on the phone? I had so many topics. We got to keep those balls clean. Thank you, John. Get so many topics and opinions before 4 o'clock. I don't know where to start. How about e-education? I love it. I, there's nothing better than a good argument when both sides don't know what the hell they're talking about. Some people are against it, some people are for it, but it turns out we don't even know what we're for or against. E-learning is next. This is the Showgram. It's so true. Listen, I mean, you want the best for your kids, right? But do you really trust that that's what the government wants? Because the union doesn't. The union thinks that the government just wants to cut jobs because they want to balance the budget. Uh, and they might, might not be wrong. And then, on the other hand, if you are the government, you're like, you guys don't care about the kids. You guys just want to save jobs. Okay, the province wants to save money. The union wants to save jobs. We're talking about the introduction of, and the province claims they've come down on their demand, we want four credits before graduation in high school that will be e-learning courses. Now they say two. But we're arguing about something that I don't even think we know what it is. Because everybody's like, well, you think it's a bad idea? Well, haven't you seen kids on computers? Well, yeah, kids on computers, if it's an engaging course, but if it's just them looking at a flat screen with somebody on the flat screen who's standing at a chalkboard, that's not going to be any good. So let's talk to a professor who's looked into this. I mean, we looked high and we looked low to find somebody who's got some expertise in this field, and that would be Michael Barber, who's an associate professor at the College of Education and Health and Science at Toro University in California. Michael, thank you very much for your time. It's a pleasure to be here. So I guess you can't give us a definitive thumbs up or thumbs down because e-learning could mean a million different things. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, the minister has yet to really tell us exactly how an online course would look or what's going to be required of it. So at this stage, we are left to essentially guess as to what he means. And unfortunately, that speculation has gone wild on both sides of the uh, argument. So you're not ready to dismiss or to give a thumbs up to the concept because the concept I think could be really kids. Kids learn on computers. Their they're, kids are really smart. They can teach people a lot of things about computers, but that doesn't mean if they're basically staring at a TV, which is a camera on a teacher in another classroom, that wouldn't be helpful, would it? Not for most students, no. I mean, instruction, regardless of what medium it's being delivered in, as long as it's well-designed, well-delivered, and well-supported, and that those three aspects are considered based upon the types of students that are being served, it can be effective in, in any situation. The, the problem we run into is that so often in education, both in e-learning and in our classrooms, is that you have uh, instructors or um, instructional designers or teachers that essentially try one or two things and, you know, a small group of students will learn from that and the rest of the students won't. And, you know, the more uh, arrows you have in your quiver, so to speak, in terms of how you go about providing that instruction, the wider range of students that you're going to be able to serve. So what does e-learning look like if it's, uh, if it's something that would work? Um, well, it depends on the type of student. You know, if you've got a student that is primarily taking courses that are in the college or university uh, stream or track or those type of courses, um, that kind of student can probably have success with a lot less support, particularly support at the local level, than a student that's taking courses that are primarily designed for uh, workplace training. 
that student likely needs a lot more support at the local level than what you would find, and by local level, I mean in the school, oftentimes in the room with them. And when you look across the province right now, depending upon the specific board you're looking at, in some cases even the individual school, in some cases you do have a fair amount of support being provided at the local school level. And in other cases, these kids are put into a room largely by themselves, although um, under the current agreement that boards have to sign, they still have to have some level of supervision, um, that in loco parentis aspect that we would expect that in place of the prudent parent. But, um, you know, so it's not like we can put in a single system that's going to work in all cases in much the same way that I couldn't tell you this is how you yeah. teach in a classroom and every student's going to be okay. So you're saying, hey, you could you could come up with a good e-learning system, but but it's not cheap. No, no, it's definitely not cheap. I mean, in some cases, you're looking at having two teachers responsible for each student, uh, one that's you know physically distant from the the student, that online subject matter teacher, and then another teacher actually in the room who may be overseeing 20, 25, 30 students that are taking, in some cases, 30 different courses, and they're there to help the students when it comes to those soft learning skills, the, the independent study skills, problem solving, critical thinking, self-motivation, those kinds of things. Yeah. So, listen, the one thing that the uh, education minister has said is that he would rather put money towards education for the kids than to put in, I guess, salary-wise, to the teachers, so this would be an investment. But when he says that, I have no, no part of me believes that he wants to spend more money to have e-learning than it would cost to have teachers in classrooms. And are you saying that this would be more money? Um, if they want to ensure that all students have the opportunity to succeed in the province, yes, it's it's definitely going to cost more. Um, but it would vary from the type of student that you're serving. Um, you know, some students you would be able to design a program that would cater to their needs probably in a more cost-efficient manner than what's be currently being done. But there's a lot of students that are going to require more support in that kind of independent environment than what is currently being provided, and more support means more money. It doesn't – I don't feel like I'm hearing from the province that they – are looking to spend more money, and that's why they're excited about e-learning. And I think that's one of the both difficulties with the conversation because, again, that's speculation or conjecture. Now, in all honesty, knowing the state of politics up there, you probably have a fairly good basis to make that conjecture. Um, but we don't know for sure. I mean, that's the, the, yeah. the difficulty. If Until the minister comes out and says, this is what it's going to look like, this is how we're doing it, we're really thinking about worst-case scenarios in many instances. Problems for a lot of rural areas, too, to make sure that they have the broadband to support all of this kind of stuff. And when the only other place that people talk about is Alabama, it's not mandated in Alabama as it would be here. It is simply uh, something that you can do along the way, but they're not mandated two credits that you have to take, correct? Not two credits, no. They are mandated that they have to take an online or technology-infused course. And for them, technology-infused is essentially what Ontario would refer to as a blended learning course. Yeah. And if that's what the minister has in mind, that they can take an online course or a blended learning course... In all honesty, I think a lot of people in the province would change their minds about whether or not this mandate was a good thing. All right, Michael, thank you very much. Michael Barber, an education expert on e-learning. We've talked 10, 10.